Is it possible to gain the life extension benefits of autophagy without fasting for several days in a row? So let's go through some of the basics. Autophagy is the cellular detoxification process that requires the abstinence of nutrients. Any type of energy, whether from carbs, protein, fat, exogenous ketones, BCAs or fiber will inhibit autophagy to some degree. To induce autophagy, your liver glycogen needs to be low. You need to suppress the anabolic pathway of mTOR, which is the pathway that signals your cells to grow and replicate. You also need to upregulate AMPK, which is the fuel sensor that gets released in energy deprivation and fat burning. And you need to be in this depleted state for at least a day or even more. Autophagy is a very new thing and we don't know much about it, and that's what the current research is showing us. However, what we also know is that autophagy is a matter of degree and it's happening in different tissues all the time. There are even some foods and compounds that boost autophagy even while eating. Exercise and heat saunas can also stimulate autophagy. So what I propose is that rather than looking at autophagy as something regulated by food, think of it as mediated by the overall energy homeostasis of your body. Whenever your body is in a depleted state, you're burning more fat, you're keeping your lymph system active, you're using your endogenous energy sources from your internal stores, and you're stimulating autophagy at least a bit more. Therefore, if you were to upregulate the AMPK boosting pathways that make your body burn its endogenous fuel sources and suppress the mTOR boosting pathways that register the presence of abundant nutrients, then you can induce mild autophagy while still eating on a regular basis. Are you serious? There are also some good research by Walter Longo and his fasting mimicking diet, which kinda mimics the physiology of fasting to a certain degree, is gonna put you into deep ketosis, but at the same time, you may not gain the full benefits of autophagy, like this deeper cellular cleansing. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's a still great way of kind of restricting your nutrient intake and priming yourself to be more pro-autophagy, if that makes sense. The best and most surest way to trigger autophagy is to fast for at least 72 hours. That's the general milestone where you can see that autophagy is beginning to really ramp up. But, you know, you can't fast all the time for that long unless you have a lot of body fat. But uh, you can still trigger autophagy and gain some of the benefits without going through these extended fasts. So here are some of the tips for that. Number one, you need to still practice intermittent fasting every day. At minimum, you would want to fast for 18 to 20 hours every day to prime your body to produce more ketones and to deplete your energy stores. The truth is that you're not actually fasting as long as you think you are because digesting food takes a long time and before you can enter into a fasted state you need to be burnt off the energy or the calories that you consumed in your last meal. It depends on what kind of a food is and how much you ate but generally it takes about six to eight hours for your body to break down the nutrients, absorb the nutrients and clear out the bloodstream from those nutrients and only after that you're gonna begin your fast. So in reality, if you eat dinner at 8 p.m. then you only begin to fast in the middle of the night at about 1 to 2 a.m. In the morning you've been fasting only for let's say 7 to 8 hours, not 12 hours as you might think. Damn it. So the lean gain style of fasting of 16 and 8 isn't definitely enough to trigger growth hormone or even to trigger autophagy. It's simply a way of time restricting your feeding window and, in, and, and this way you can kind of reduce your caloric intake for the time being. But to actually trigger mild autophagy or something then you need to do the warrior diet style where you fast for at least 18 to 20 hours. Number two, whenever you do eat, you want to eat relatively low carb to maintain lower glycogen stores. Even if you eat a non-ketogenic diet, you don't want to eat any more carbs than your body needs because it's gonna say to your body that we don't need to burn fat and we have energy in the system. This is definitely gonna elevate mTOR, it's gonna suppress AMPK and it's going to shut down autophagy completely. Muscle glycogen is irrelevant in this scenario, so 
you can definitely exercise hard and deplete your muscle glycogen and even consume some carbs to replenish those muscle glycogen while still staying in ketosis. But to maintain autophagy, you want to keep liver glycogen quite low most of the time. This means that eating high amounts of carbohydrates isn't definitely ideal in most scenarios. The only time you want to eat carbs is in a depleted state when your body is going to use that glucose very fast and the muscle cells are going to absorb it very quickly. You don't want to be consuming too much fruit either because fruit will replenish liver glycogen without filling up your muscle glycogen. So it will definitely shut down the AMPK pathways. Number three, you don't want to be eating high amounts of calories or high amounts of fat either because they're going to raise mTOR and suppress autophagy. Energy is energy and it doesn't matter where it's coming from whether from bulletproof coffee, whether from a banana, whether from steak, raw eggs, exogenous ketones or a big bowl of lettuce. Overconsumption of calories in any shape or form is going to inhibit AMPK. For longevity purposes and fat burning purposes, you always want to maintain this state where you're staying around your caloric maintenance. You don't ever want to do this crazy dirty box because it's going to mess up all of your metabolic pathways almost. You've got fat. Caloric restriction, however, it can definitely increase autophagy to some degree. If you're eating at a caloric deficit, then you may potentially raise autophagy to some degree. Fourth, aerobic exercise probably stimulates more autophagy than resistance training because it also increases lymph flow. However, both of them are needed for maintaining lean mass. If you were to do only cardio at a fasted state while eating at a caloric deficit, then you will induce autophagy, but autophagy is catabolic and it will make you lose lean muscle tissue. Therefore, if you're eating fewer calories, then it's super important to do resistance training and lift heavy weights because you're gonna preserve your muscle and muscle is incredibly important for longevity. It has many anti-aging benefits, it improves insulin sensitivity, it strengthens your bones and it protects against many other diseases. You would live longer and healthier if you were to experience less autophagy but maintain muscle rather than get skinny fat but have more autophagy. There's this fine line between balancing between mTOR and autophagy. You want to have both. 5. Certain foods also stimulate autophagy, like coffee, green tea, turmeric, ginger, ginseng, medicinal mushrooms, adaptogenic herbs, berberine, and elderberries. The idea is to activate AMPK, which signals your body that it needs to switch over to burning its energy back up stores. All of them are these kinds of herbs that have this hormetic effect on your body. They have small amounts of anti-nutrients and they activate the NRF2 pathway, which is the main antioxidant pathway in your body. This is going to have a beneficial anti-fragile and hormetic effect on your entire body and triggering autophagy is probably a part of it. Number six. Everything that stimulates the lymph system will have a carryover effect to autophagy as well. Sweating through exercise, hot yoga, heat saunas, infrared saunas, rebounding, bouncing around on your feet. Everything that keeps your blood flowing can at least help you with flushing out the toxins in your body. If you've accumulated a ton of waste material and certain toxins into your system, then you're not going to even trigger autophagy until you've cleaned out your body first. So that's why if your purpose is, is to activate autophagy more, then you want to always maintain this semi-depleted state. Doing stuff like ice cold baths, coffee enemas, different inversion tables, salt flushes, taking activated charcoal, spirulina, all of those things that help you detox your body, they can help you to trigger autophagy faster and they can also make you enter a fasted state also quite rapidly. As soon as your body gets depleted, that's a sign to raise AMPK and in so doing, activate autophagy as well. Number seven, suppressing insulin and eating less protein will suppress mTOR, which can help to raise autophagy. Too much autophagy can make you catabolic if you stay there for too long. That's why I prefer to stay in a semi-autophagy state most of the time and whenever I'm trying to build muscle after resistance training, I deliberately make myself more anabolic with eating slightly more protein and other amino acids. You can also take these supplements that promote muscle growth like leucine, HMB or creatine or stuff like that. They're gonna stimulate mTOR and promote muscle growth but because I'm already 
staying in semi-autophagy and very deep ketosis most of the day with fasting, exercise, heat saunas and autophagy boosting foods, then I create this buffer zone and I kind of reap the benefits of both worlds. Number eight, dry fasting is especially effective when triggering autophagy and putting yourself into ketosis faster. When you're not eating food and you started to fast, then before your body can trigger autophagy, then it still needs to go through this period of digesting the food that you ate last night and also absorbing the other nutrients. Drinking water itself is still a form of energy. It's not going to give you calories that you can burn off, but it's still something that you have to digest. Hydration is definitely very crucial and you don't want to deprive yourself from water for too long and you want to make sure that you get enough electrolytes, minerals and salts and stuff like that. But at the same time, dry fasting for short periods of time are very beneficial just because of the autophagy boosting effect. They also say that dry fasting is three times more effective than water fasting. So in theory, you can trigger deep autophagy with only one day of dry fasting instead of three days of water fasting. <laughs> and you don't even need to dry fast for the entire 24 hours. Simply restricting your water intake as well and experiencing mild dehydration at least throughout the night, that's a great way to prime your body to activate AMPK more and trigger autophagy. Even in this scenario, you're not actually dehydrated because burning fatty acids and converting your body fat into energy, it creates hydrogen molecules, it creates water and you're not even gonna stop urinating while you're dry fasting. You're still burning fat, you're still producing calories from your body fat and you're still converting body fat into water. That's how crazy your body is, like literally a survival machine. And you can definitely add this to your arsenal of fasting. So on any day, what I recommend is to at least dehydrate yourself throughout the night. That's the minimum you should do. You don't want to be guzzling down a lot of water before you go to bed because it's going to make you go to the bathroom, it's going to disrupt your sleep. And you definitely don't want to be drinking anything throughout the night either because it's going to inhibit the dehydration dry fasting effect. What you want to do instead is stop drinking water after dinner and simply rehydrate yourself in the morning with some good salts and some water. That's a very simple way of activating the hormetic effect of dry fasting without actually going into a crazy dry fasting routine. <coughs> so here is my general blueprint of what I do to every day to keep myself in a more autophagy boosting state without actually fasting for any longer than 24 hours. So what I do in the morning, I've been fasting for about 10 hours or so. Then I'm not going to drink a lot of water immediately either. The absolute minimum I aim for is 12 hours of dehydration. That's a good medium point because I don't want to slow down my energy production and uh, I don't want to get cramps or anything like that either because I still stay physically active throughout the day. What I break the dry fast with is, is usually some hot water with a bit of baking soda, some pink Himalayan rock salt and I mix it all together well. Baking soda is an amazing thing to drink every day and is going to promote kidney health is going to remove the acidity in your blood that you accumulate during fasting, it's going to break down some kidney stones if you have some, and it has anti-cancer properties, so you, it's safe to say that it can also maybe stimulate autophagy to some degree. I drink that cup of water, and after that, I kind of start rehydrating myself as well. Throughout the day, I'm going to drink some water with some more pink Himalayan rock salt. It's going to keep me hydrated, it's going to keep my electrolytes in balance. And it's going to prevent me from losing my electrolytes as well. Because drinking too much water without the minerals, it may cause me to go to the bathroom too often. And I'm going to lose my minerals. I'm going to feel like crap. And I potentially get some muscle cramps as well. So water fasting without salts and electrolytes is very bad for you. And you always want to make sure that you get some salts. Then I still continue to fast at minimum for 18 hours every day. On longer days, I tend to fast for 22 hours, but if I'm fasting for 18 hours, then I'm going to break the fast with some autophagy boosting compounds. You can check out the recipe to this kind of uh, anti-aging cocktail that I make. You've probably heard about it already, but uh, it contains stuff like turmeric, ginseng, ginger, rosemary, cinnamon, chaga mushroom, spirulina, raw cacao, some more salts, 
and some ginseng. All of those things activate AMPK and research has also shown that they activate autophagy as well. Potentially it's going to break autophagy but as we know autophagy is a matter of degree. It's going to inhibit autophagy a little bit but it's going to still maintain it. To absorb those nutrients I also add some black pepper, some cayenne pepper and a little bit of either MCT oil or some bone broth that I cooked up. That small amount of fat is going to promote bioavailability and is going to slow down the digestion process. So it's kind of safe to say that I'm creeping in and out of autophagy. You don't want to take too much fat or you don't want to put too many compounds into the mix because you still want to maintain a relatively low carb state and low calorie state as well to stay depleted. <coughs> so that's what I drink. I call it the AMPK activated autophagy activator. All rights reserved to Seamland. After that I continue to fast. I'm gonna even have a workout. I'm gonna move around. What I usually work out with is high intensity interval training like a Tabata session and I usually finish off my workouts with some bodybuilding exercises. Then in the evening I'm gonna eat a low carb keto dinner with some of the sulforaphane rich vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage which is gonna activate NRF2, some fermented foods which is good for the gut microbiome, some good sources of protein like eggs, fish, organ meats, red meat for promoting muscle growth and some healthy fats like olive oil, MCT oil, bone broth, butter or sour cream. You want to consume a ton of these polyphenols and flavonoids that going to trigger NRF2 and probably gonna stimulate autophagy to some degree as well. But that is it for this question about autophagy and I definitely think that you can apply at least some of these principles of depleting your body and allowing your endogenous energy production to take over. Hey, let's be careful on it. Body, mind, empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter, quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind.